Marshall are back again. Another Bluetooth portable speaker in their signature style, the Marshall Middleton joins the brand's range of portable and home speakers, but with its more heavy duty design, could this be a good solution for both home and away? And is it worth its 270 pound price tag? First of all, where does this speaker sit? Well, Marshall have a range of portable speakers and a range of home speakers in their lineup, and with the price and the weight of the Middleton, this speaker sits slap bang in the middle. Now, my initial thoughts are you would get more sound for your money going for a speaker in the home range, but you're of course missing out on that portability. And for the portable speakers, you are losing out a little bit in the sound department in place of additional features. So this speaker should offer us either the best of both or it could miss the mark. Now I know you're all dying to hear how this speaker actually sounds, but there's a lot that we need to cover in this review to help you decide if you should part with your cash. Now, I've said it before and I'll say it again, Marshall's style is iconic, so it only feels right to kick things off here. The Middleton fits seamlessly into their range and is essentially the bigger brother to the fan favorite, the Emberton 2. We've got the traditional brass colored scripted logo, a black grille, and some nicely detailed black rubber casing, making an overall design that I'm a huge fan of. So far, it's only launched in this colorway, but as with most other Marshall speakers, I imagine that we'll see a few variations coming soon. Now, once out of the box, I can confirm that it's a weighty little thing. It's probably down to the battery, but this definitely isn't a speaker that you can chuck about. Now, as you can see, it's considerably bigger than the Emberton 2, and I think it's nearly three times heavier, so quite a difference there. It weighs in at 1.8 kilo, so almost the weight of two liters of water for a little bit of context. So although it's classed as portable, it's definitely the type of speaker that you're going to notice when you're carrying it in your rucksack for too long. Oh, and I did forget to mention as well, it also comes with this detachable carry handle, which is something that I did feel was missing from the Emberton. So a really nice design addition to this speaker. It's a pretty simple loop with a little elasticity in it, but when you've got a heavier speaker, it's useful for carrying it around. And I actually think that this loop feels pretty premium. It's nice and durable too, so I've got no worries about this breaking or tearing. Now we'll come back to durability in a bit, but this speaker boasts an IP67 rating, which means it's fully submersible in up to one meters worth of water for 30 minutes, and it's completely dustproof. Now this isn't a speaker that's built for dual orientation, so you can't stand it up on its side, but you have got the speakers in the back and the front and and sides so it offers multi-directional sound but again I'll come back to that in a little bit more depth in a minute. Now on the top, we've got some lovely rubber detailing and then some handy controls here that also look the part. I absolutely love the brass center dial, which acts as your volume, play pause, and skip button. There's also a Bluetooth pairing button and this LED strip here, which tells you the battery percentage and volume level when you're adjusting the volume, which is a feature that I really, really rate. But I think it's these adjustable bass and treble controls, which sets this speaker apart from your average portable speaker and it sticks to the classic Marshall heritage. Now I do just want to quickly show you guys the Marshall Bluetooth app too, which gives you more control over your speaker. Now it's a pretty basic but nicely designed interface that gives you some simple controls over playback and we've also got some customizable EQ settings for you to play around with the audio performance and adjust it to suit your personal style. Now you can also use the app to set up Marshall stack mode which is super simple to use. Now Louis, what is stack mode, I hear you guys ask. Well, this is essentially Marshall's version of speaker grouping, where you can group multiple stack-enabled Marshall speakers together to boost the sound. Now, I had my fingers crossed that you could use stack mode to group a Middleton and an Emberton together, and although the app makes it sound a little bit confusing, you actually can, which is great news for us all looking to bring even more volume to the party. And even better, you can also do the same with the Willen. Now you can actually bypass the app and completely set up stack mode by pressing the Bluetooth button three times on your main speaker and then pressing the Bluetooth button twice on the speaker that you'd like to pair it with, which is another neat bit of functionality. Now, unfortunately, putting two Middletons into stack mode wouldn't make this a stereo pair mode as I was hoping, but two together I can imagine would be pretty impressive for larger gatherings given how loud the Emberton and Middleton sound together. Now, when it comes to connectivity, things are pretty simple. We've got Bluetooth 5.1 with this speaker, so pretty standard connectivity there, and that means that you can be set up and listening in under two minutes or so after you get this speaker out of the box. As a multi-point connection speaker, you can also connect two devices at the same time, which is great if you've got a couple of people desperate to pick the playlist or want to connect it to both your laptop and your phone 
for simple control. Now, as I mentioned, there's also the aux line in on the rear. So if you want to do away with Bluetooth and enjoy a wired listening experience from say a turntable, then you've got that option to do so as well. Now there's no Spotify connect or voice control with this speaker, which would have been nice, but I'm happy with Bluetooth for this type of speaker. And from our testing, the Bluetooth range has been decent and we've not experienced any connectivity issues so far. So me and Sam are outside and we're gonna do a very quick Bluetooth test with the Marshall Middleton. So apparently Bluetooth 5.1 range of around about 10 meters, but we're gonna put that to the test now and see how far it goes. Right, you take that. I've got the phone, Sam's got the speaker. Let's see how far he gets. That's about 10 meters there, I'd say. Yeah, it's still strong. Still working? So that, that's easily 20, 25, 30 meters now. I mean, he's just giving me the thumbs up. We're st he's now at sort of, I'd say easily 80, 90 meters. So but then guys, we're looking at around about 100 meters or so. I think if you're going to use this for parties, gatherings, whatever, you're going to have no worries whatsoever about this thing cutting out that was completely uninterrupted 100 meters or so so i think that definitely passes the bluetooth test yeah. now also as there's no mics this does mean that this speaker can't be used as a speaker for calls so that's also just something to bear in mind there of course, when it comes to portability, battery life is hugely important and can be a big deciding factor for many. The Middleton offers a 20 hour battery life with a four and a half hour full recharge time and quick charge feature where a short 20 minute charge gives you an extra two hours of playtime. So fairly solid battery life, though it is 10 hours less than the Emberton 2, which is a little bit disappointing for the price. Now, one good feature though, is that this speaker can also double up as a power bank for your phone, which is really handy if you're out and about and your phone is running low, but obviously that will eat into the battery life of this speaker. Now, we actually put it to the test and had okay results. So I charged my phone from 50% for an hour and 20 minutes and it hit 80%, which isn't awful, but the real killer was the fact that the Middleton went from 80% battery to 40% in that same time frame without playing any music. Now I can see it being a lifesaver in certain situations to keep your phone alive, so I still like it as a feature, but it will kill the speaker's battery, so maybe don't get rid of that power bank just yet. Right, the bit that you've all been waiting for, how does the Middleton sound? Well, internally, Marshall have really beefed this one up in comparison to the Emberton 2. The Middleton also makes the most of Marshall's unique, true stereophonic technology, which basically means that you're gonna experience 360 degree multi-directional sound wherever you place your speaker. So unlike a lot of traditional front-facing speakers, the Middleton is capable of being placed anywhere and separating out the spatial content of stereo recording, so it can be enjoyed from all angles. Now there have been some mixed reviews for this speaker, so I'll be interested to hear your feedback from the sound test and see what you guys think. Now, as mentioned, I think this sits in both the portable speaker and the home speaker market, so I'm interested to test the sound for both. So I'm gonna give you guys a demo of how it sounds, but as always, our usual disclaimer that what you hear over a YouTube video isn't going to be 100% accurate to what we can hear in our studio, but it should give you a flavor of how this thing sounds. Okay then, so before we get into the sound test, I'm here with Barry, the binaural mic, and if you're wearing headphones, you should really for this section, uh, then you can probably hear that I'm coming through the left and right channels. Uh, so basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk around the table with Barry and uh, that should show off the Middleton's 360 degree sound. Okay, so hopefully that translated across well over camera. So you can definitely tell which way the drivers are firing, but I still think the 360 sound is really impressive. So uh, on to the sound test. Everything is covered in darkness And the sun is outside I guess I'm living in the dark So hopefully that gave you all a good enough taste of what the Middleton is capable of. And I've got to admit, it is a little bit of a beast. 
It immediately brings volume, a wide soundstage, and bass that you can really feel, making it a great option for those outdoor spaces or parties that you might have lined up. Now, it offers very impressive separation. Instruments sound great, and I've got to say that the details and the vocals are really enjoyable too. It's not the most detailed in an audiophile way, but that's not what it's about and not what I'm expecting from a portable speaker. For me personally, it's lively, enjoyable listening, and with the multi-directional audio, it adds an extra level of immersion that I really wasn't expecting. As a portable speaker, I think this is going to give great volume when you're out and about, but when you bring it home, that's when you'll feel the real benefits of a solid audio performance that also can fit into your space in an aesthetic way. Now, I know that a lot of you are dying to find out how the Middleton and the Emberton 2 compare, and just by looking at the two of them, it's easy to draw a lot of comparisons between them both. Now, if you want the simple answer, based on pure performance, the Middleton wins this one hands down, and it should, considering the price jump. Listening to them both side by side, it just feels like you completely lose out on the bass the minute you switch to the Emberton. And once I've had it, I just don't want to lose it. Now, you also get a little more control over the Middleton, as the Emberton only allows you to use customizable EQ presets in app, which is a nice plus for me too. Now, obviously, there's a considerable price gap between the two speakers. So if you are happy to get the same signature Marshall sound on a smaller and less bassy scale, then by all means go for the Emberton 2. I think it probably is the better choice if you're looking for a genuine out and out portable speaker. But for me, what you gain in performance and spec from the Middleton does really nail it into the premium portability category, meaning it probably is worth just over £100 more in the grand scheme of things, especially when you consider it could be a capable home speaker too. But again, that's just something that's going to come down to your own personal preference and, of course, how you plan on using your speaker. Another speaker that comes to mind is the JBL Extreme 3, which has pretty much dominated the market for this type of speaker around this price point. Now, if you want a full comparison, then let me know down in the comments below. But my overall thoughts are that the two offer slightly different performances, which will appear appeal to different audiences. Now from my initial comparison, I think the Extreme 3 maybe sounds slightly louder while the Middleton gives you a little bit more of a rounded performance with a weightier low end. But as I say, more tests need to be carried out before I can give you my full verdict on that comparison. But another important factor for a portable speaker is the durability. Now it's my home sounds, we don't like to do things by halves and it's one thing saying it looks durable but the question is, what is it like when it's pushed to the limit? Over to you, Sam. Hey guys, Sam here, and I've been tasked with testing the durability of this Middleton speaker. Now, my initial thoughts is it's gonna sound way worse than it is gonna be because of the weight of this speaker, but let's drop it on a few different surfaces and find out, shall we? I, I'm scared to drop this thing, I'm not gonna lie. Okay, all right. <laughs> oh, that sounds horrible. It's okay, there's a bit of a, a, bit of a cut there, actually. But apart from that, it's fine. I feel like I'm, should I just like, not yeet it, but give it a nice little toss. Yeet! Right in the oh, mud. No. That's gonna get in the grill, isn't it? I told I was gonna test it, didn't I? I'm gonna have to clean that, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we just spent the last half hour or so chucking this thing around, and I've gotta say I'm impressed. Uh, obviously, for the average user, they're not gonna be dropping it this much, but for me, it's really good to have the reassurance that this is actually gonna survive if you do chuck it into some mud. <laughs> So yeah, overall, I'm really impressed, and I'd say that this is a, uh, a success for the Middleton. Yeah, fair play. Okay, it's time to bring the durability test inside. So we've just set up the studio. I'm gonna fill up this with water. We're gonna drop the Middleton in, leave it for half an hour, see if it still plays. Let's go. On the whole, I'm pretty impressed with this speaker, but we do need to discuss its use cases. For me, the price is a little bit of a sticking point. Now you can get a pretty decent portable speaker for half the price of this one, so why would you spend the extra money? Well, I think if you're looking for an out and out lightweight portable speaker that you can just chuck in your bag, take it away with you on holiday and use for the occasional weekend trip, 
then you really don't need this speaker. The weight and the size isn't the most convenient and I do think that you're overpaying for those requirements. You're far better off opting for something like the Emberton 2 or one of the other great portable speakers out there like the Bose Soundlink Flex or the JBL Flip 6. This is a more heavy duty portable speaker which you'd want to make use of around your home as well as the odd trip out and about. For me, this helps to justify that price point as I think you'll get more use out of this speaker in this scenario all year round. I don't see this sitting in a drawer in between your weekend trips and holidays. I think the design also comes into play here too. For those with a brand affinity with Marshall or simply those who like the aesthetic that this speaker offers, it's a really nice addition to your home and I'd be happy for this to be sat on the side in my living room. And although I'm not a typically a Marshall fanboy, this larger, more industrial feel is something that I could see having a place in my house. Now, of course, there is the Marshall home range to also take into consideration. The Acton 3 sits £10 cheaper and in terms of spec is a more powerful speaker. So you are paying a premium for portability with the Middleton. So ultimately, the question that you need to be asking yourself is what are your non-negotiables and how far are you willing to go to have a slice of that signature martial sound in your life?